Let's try that again. Good evening, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, everyone in between and all around. How are we all? Um, probably going to go for a short one tonight. Um, send a couple of thank yous out to Brendan Matthews, Danny Crom 5, and Yak Pie for the hosts. And uh, there's, there's, there's a small moped outside by the sounds of it. Do, does that person's mother know where her hairdryer is? Hello, Fuberius, how are you doing? Right, bit of a more raw kind of thing tonight in that I can't even be bothered to get a glass, so I'm having my um, non-denominational cola from the bottle. I've at least taken off the um, tag that says which manufacturer made this bottle of cola. But by looking at the bar, I think you can probably tell which one it is. Oh, I'm going to actually have to store it down there. Because otherwise you can see it on frame, and that would be a pity. Hello, Minxy Rose. Um, it, it did just go... Where's my chair? Okay, my chair is now behaving. That's better. Um, what do I need up? That I don't need up. That I do, though, because I'd like to be able to see what everyone's saying properly. Ooh, I have control scroll for zoom on that. That's good for my old eyes. Okay, so if we recall last time, have I got two? Yeah, I've got two instances of VS up because I am a clever individual. Um, so if we recall, um, when last we spoke about a week ago, unfortunately, we were working our way through some tutorials. Um, this is what we got so far, which is the ACO synchronous client for a uh, for a date time yeah network time client uh, there's one on the end of it as well Mingsy Rose hang on let me let me do it there we go that's how I do a typing so yeah, oh yeah, yeah, that's still in shot as well. That probably doesn't need to be in shot, does it? Um, I'm sure it'll probably go dark as we're streaming, and I'll be frantically trying to trying to switch lights on in here. But for now, while it's light, let's make some use of it. Right, so we've got this, and we tested it out against a remote server, and. I assert that that worked. Uh, Mingsy Rose is saying it won't go dark until about half nine. Um, that being the case, it might not go dark during this stream then. I'm not aiming for a particularly long one. So we had that. And we now have a tutorial that says they want us to write a server. So I've done a little bit of Blue Peter. Um, for those who don't... Who are not British based. Blue Peter, I think in America you have Julia Child. Well, you know, she puts the cake, I think Julia Child, she'll put the cake in the oven and then she'll pull another one out that's ready made. So, in true Blue Peter fashion, I have a project made up for the server. I've got Conan working in it and all the rest of it. I've actually done some pre planning for this one. Um, so we'll look at that. However, a slight diversion, and I'm rather glad you're here for Berius actually, because you might like this. Um, we've had a few words of people who've um, not been mad keen on the fact that we've been doing mainly C++ work. Not so much not mad keen on that, would rather that we do functional programming go back down that track. So if I go and show something, um, something interesting that I found about C++. Now C Sharp, what I'm about to show is illegal in C Sharp. Um, actually, let's do the C Sharp first. Let's go... Um, have I got anything interesting in VS Code? Shall I just quickly open a new file? and go so in c sharp you can do um something like and i'll use the example that i used with work um using transform equals a funk of 
let's say we've got a result type because we've been using lang uh, language extensions so um, thing to a result um, hang on let me get my brackets right of uh, thing fail type and you can do that that's entirely legitimate um, so C sharp has type alias in it let's actually make this a little bit highlighted so that works but that's not generic and what I wanted to say is could you do transform of T equals func T to a result of T fail type unfortunately you can't do that in C sharp C sharp says no. Let's try something similar in um, in C plus plus. Let's use Compiler Explorer. So we'll include functional um, fact. Let's do a bit of control scroll as well. Hey, that'll do. 125%. I know I could probably play about with font sizes. In fact, I think I might there. So we can do include functional, and let's say that we've got a struct of, oh, I don't know, result, um, and it's going to be templated. So type name, f type, well, let's do success fail in that order. Type name F. So we want a result which has got S success, F fail, and um, bool is su success. So that's the setup. Um, what's this moaning about? It's just moaning that we'll probably want a semicolon there. Um, so what we now have, what we can now do is go std function of, let's say, result, um, so success we're going to say is an int, fail we'll say is a std string, Um, good evening, Turbo Nautilus. And we'll say int i, whatever, uh, return, result of, oh, think about this, Gareth, come on, um, int std string of oh I don't know one true something like that obviously we'd have nicer built up versions of these so we'd have a result.success result.fail whatever but for now that kicks it all off um, semicolon there and that should compile uh, the link is ah yes because we've got running which I don't want to run so that compiles. I'm not particularly bothered about what it says, I just want it to show us compiling. So the obvious logical thing, and what we can do in C++, is we can go using, uh, what we can do in C Sharp, sorry. Um, we could always go using transform equals, and then just pinch this lot. And then rather than auto there transform and that once we put a semicolon in should still work in fact we don't need to see much of the output apart from that it worked so the fact that you guys can't see the assembly is a bit neither in there although we could I, I suppose you can see a good amount of it so far there's nothing there we haven't been able to do in C sharp but the logical next step of going um, templates 
type name T, and then suggesting that we go um, and do that. Now that in C++ still works. Template is declared here. Um, I don't know what Clang's warning me about with that, but if we say transform of int from there, that will now work. So this type aliasing in C++ does work, even though it doesn't in C sharp. So you can do interesting stuff. You could, you know, you could abstract out the result type to be, you know, a result of T and just keep the string in. And that's something I always wondered if that was something that was more a common thing in functional programming languages than imperative or OO. Um, it's also something that um, I think I've seen done in F sharp. So, yeah, um, I suppose the, the upshot of this one is C++ can be a lot more, um, a lot more, what's it, a lot more functional than that. I mean, the big takeaway for me, and yeah, for various is, uh, right on that, um, if we take this T out and go, you know, say int, int, that statement within a namespace in C sharp, so it has to be within a namespace, that will work. And yes, you can type alias in C sharp. So, alluding to the question that Mingsy Rose is asking, I did show my CTO earlier that, well, I think it was yesterday, I showed him that we could do this. Um, and then his obvious first logical thought was the same as mine. Can you do the um, generic version? And while you can't do that in C Sharp, I would very strongly argue that you can in C++. Now, next interesting talking point there, for, for my kind of point of view, is this is one time where something you can do in C++, to my mind is something I'd like to do in other languages. I will say that just because something is possible in C++ doesn't mean you should. I mean, to make the joke, we go, you know, um, type name, um, template, factorial, int i, you know, I think everyone knows where this one's going. Um, struct factorial um, of zero. And do we need to overload the operator here? Do we go um, overload um, operator? Oh gosh, hang on. Return one. Is that roughly the syntax? What's this moaning about? Operator, whatever, cannot be the name. Variable data member. Um, just operator that, isn't it? Um, factorial there. Okay, what's what's the C++ operator overload here? Um, what's the invoke here? Come on, I, I know I can do this. Um, function call operator overloading. Um, oh, bother, yes, of course, we need... Um, we need to return something, don't we? Int operator, whatever. Okay, that's... Really, it's two sets? Okay, um, does that not work? And obviously we need the other
the other one of those, which is Factorial Eye. Um, I times factorial I minus one. And yeah, we need the template again. Explicit specialization of undeclared template struct factorial. Class template partial specialization does not specialize any template argument. Ah. Yes, of course, you don't do it that way. And in theory, I think that now. Oh, we've got to now do it, haven't we? We've got to run this. Um, in main. Stud C out factorial six stud end line, and of course, we need to um, include IO stream in there. Can I not do a stream with... Well, Factorial 6 is a... an int, isn't it? It is, I'm sure it is. Um... Oh, am I going to have to look up the template? Um, am I going to actually have to look this up? Oh, it's a... Oh, bother. Yeah, it does it off, value, off an enum and value. Okay. Okay. Um, enum value. And again, similar transform here. Um, enum value equals one. What's this moaning about? Where have I gone wrong? Well, we're expecting that ah, semicolons are not needed there, I would say. That one is still trying to moan, and then it just goes value. Um, and if we quickly go and just for the sake of it, because we can comment all that lot out, can't clang. So 720 is what comes out for factorial six. I think that's right. Let's try four. And at this point, we will want the assembly out of this. At the moment, it's doing this all at runtime. Oh, no, hang on. There's a 24 there. So it isn't. It's doing it at compile time. So, what are we doing? Chucking into EDI, the offset of standard count. So that's what we're calling. Chuck 24 in. Then call the operator. And move whatever comes out of that operator into R14. Yeah, that all makes sense. So, literally compile time metaprogramming. So, 
that's something that you... This is all something that you can do in C++ that I would argue is ordinarily a little bit silly, um, to say the very least. However... And I mean, it, it's an interesting exercise. But what you can do in C++ that I think is sensible, and again, I'll take off the execution because we don't have a main, is this. And I, I mean, I know that we should benchmark things and whatever, but that doesn't look like a lot of code. And I'm sure under further optimization, we might get, well, that might blow up, actually. It, it hasn't. It hasn't gone to huge amounts. But for what we're doing, um, that's not horrific. And I don't think we get any more. I mean, there's 55 lines. Can we diff that? I, I, well, no, that's a wrong question. I know we can diff. I just don't know how. I just wonder what would happen. Well, let's say we've got 55 lines there. Let's just do this the simple way. Um, copy that lot. Throw it there. Let's say int and int. Get rid of the transform. And what we'll find is, I suspect, yeah, it looks like the compiler's just compiled that away for us anyway. So that's a slight aside for, you know, a good use of Compiler Explorer and something that we can do in a functional manner in C++ that even C Sharp that arguably is trying to become a functional programming language still can't do. Anyway, that was a quick aside that was about 20 minutes. So... Let's actually crack on and play with some sockets, otherwise we'd be lying in the stream title. So, again, to recap, um, this was a client that goes out to the NIST time server and gives us a time back in theory. I say in theory because that didn't seem to. It has done now. Okay, I'm... I'm, I'm Slightly satisfied. Whoa, that wasn't what I wanted to do. Let's zoom that one up. It was that one I wanted to move? One of the ones on the sneaky screen. Okay, so the next tutorial, and I will post the link in chat for this, um, is let's make a synchronous TCP daytime server. Uh, yes, Minxy Rose, I will have a coffee fairy in just over a fortnight. How very exciting. Um, which, yeah, um, the stream on Tuesday the 18th is cancelled. Um, thank you for pointing that out, Minxy Rose. The Tuesday the 18th stream, i.e. a fortnight today, won't be happening. Um, I am at my work's belated Christmas party um, yes this is genuinely going to be our Christmas party and yes it is rather belated um, so all, all jokes aside anyway let's have a look at the sync let's have a look at writing a synchronous server using this um, boost um, ACO thing so we want to include things like C time. Um, let's go for. We're going to need IO string, IO stream. We'll need to include probably string. Yeah, string's been asked for, and we'll include boost ACO dot HPP. Then let's have a function of std um, string. Yes, that's a fair point, Ming Series. Oh gosh. Um, I'm just going to have to rearrange some of those streams. Um, doing one on the Wednesday is going to be difficult as well, isn't it? So Thursday's a goer. The Monday, it might be a Monday, Wednesday, uh, a Monday, Wednesday, Friday week. 
I might have to re revert to that kind of timetable. Anyway, um, let's make daytime string. Um, I am not put um because we're only in. Do you know what? In a function, I don't mind doing it. No, we don't need to. It's a two-liner. We just go. Um, start time zero. Um, and return start C time whoa we'll give it a reference to now okay that'll convert it into a car star which a stud string we can use from a car star so yeah using namespace there i don't think would have been clever um, that's what the documentation suggests so anyone that's following along with tutorials and noticing that i'm di doing different things um that's slightly on purpose um, I do that kind of stuff occasionally just to kind of fit in with more with my style. So we're now making a daytime string. So on to the interesting stuff. Let's get a main function. We don't need anything else in there. Um, oh look, we've got um, exceptions coming on. Just ACO context. So we're again um, looking at context. So if we remember from the last time, this is the object that I that I O goes through. Um, think about it in terms of, I suppose, almost think about it in terms of um, Haskell's I O monad. You know. I shall grab a drink of um, unbranded cola. I'm barely a noise when mending everything. <clears throat> okay, so we've got our context. Um, and I am going to stick the using statement in. I just wasn't going to put it up at the top. So here we are going to go using boost ACO IP TCP. I don't like putting these using statements up here just in case I clash with anyone else's stuff. Um, in this it won't matter, we're self-contained, but just, just as a matter of practice, keep keeping things where they are. Anyway, let's... Um, Apparently we need a TCP acceptor to accept connection. So this is listening for a connection. Um, something we're not going to have to do because we are a client, technically, I think. But, yeah, hey, um, let's, let's at least go through this and understand what we're doing. So we'll make an acceptor. Um, And call a constructor on it, which will pass it an IO context, I believe. And it wants an endpoint and a port number. Oh, it's asking for port number. Um, we're going to listen on port 13. Now, I don't think that's going to work. So I'm going to modify that because I haven't run this up as an admin. I'll try it first, actually. But I'm expecting this to fail. So we want um, V4. And we're going to do it on port 13. Okay. So we've built that, we're accepting things on port 13, well we're not accepting anything yet on port 13, we've got an acceptor that we can start doing things with. 
So let's do a full, well, a forever loop. Um, TCP socket, socket. So again, we're going to create the socket. We always pass it in IO context. If we remember from the threading, this is partly to do with that. We're going to say that acceptor. And we'll ac accept on that socket. So this all makes sensible sense to me. Um, auto message equals make daytime string. I know it says stud string in the docs, but hey, auto should get this. Um, let's go for, let's grab ourselves an error code. And it can be an ignored error because we're not going to actually care about it. And then we'll um, write out to that socket. Um, well, to that socket. Hi, Chowaka. Have I pronounced that anywhere near right? Um, hi there, Upgrading Dave. How are you doing? Um, thank you for the lurk. Uh, yes, I'm, I, I'm slightly less glad to be... But, well... No, I'm quite glad to be able to stream again. Um, but I'm not um, not so glad to be... No, I'm quite glad to be back at work, actually. I, I'm enjoying it at the moment. So, to get us there a bit further, I just wanted to quickly get that in while I was chatting to everyone. Um, by the way, Chowacker, I'm not sure if I've seen your name in this stream before. Um, who are you? Um, can you tell us a little bit more about you? Who you are, what you do, what you enjoy? You know, how, how you found the place? All the rest of it? If I mean, obviously, only if you want to. If not, that's completely up to you. Um, I can put that button. I can also put that button. So there's some social links in the chat and a plea for your Prime subscriptions. Obviously, if you do wish to send a normal subscription my way, that is wonderful. Thank you. Um, I think there is a way of donating without giving money to Amazon, but um, actually, you know, we might as well give, we might as well support Twitch if we can. Uh, Mincy Rose, big release. Um, we've we've got one or two more coming up um the build that happened while i was away seems to have been well let's put it this way i haven't heard a huge amount about it so it seems to have been reasonably um reasonably um uneventful so yeah right seems to write to a socket with a buffer that we're building from the message and that buffer is pretty standard and we're just ignoring that error code so we're passing the error code and saying ah, we don't care what that's going what that comes out as and obviously if we're doing a try we've got a catch so let's catch a stir exception and that's going to be a reference why have i all of a sudden done that when i normally do that in c plus plus i think stir sierra E dot what? I love that name on errors. So that is really all this server's going to be. So, right, this I suspect is going to fail because I suspect that that port number, Visual Studio or Windows, is going to say, you're not an admin, and moan at me. Um, there were, oh yes, yeah, yeah. Sorry, just a little, um, little bit of uh, maintenance because we have got pre-compiled headers, so we'll include those. And you know what? Because all of those are going to be, 
included all the time anyway. Let's just... Now, copy that lot, if you would be so kind. And then, paste it there. Cool. Is this now going to not moan? I would be very surprised if this was going to work. Um, okay, so... C time. This functional variable may be unsafe. Consider using C time underscore S instead. Um, do you know what? Let's do that and see what happens. Um, stud has no member C time S. Okay. Do you know what? I'm thinking then. Um, what is C time S? Is the nose closing on the socket? Um, Fubarius. I don't, I, because this is just a simple forever, I can't see how we can close the socket because we've got no way of breaking out of this for loop. Um, so we're just going to kill the program. So, I, you know, the tutorial's not showing us how to close the socket. I'm going to assume it closes when we quit the program. I don't know if that's going to be true. Um... More interestingly is C time versus C time S. So return stud C time. Yeah, there's no such function as C time underscore S, is there? Hi there, Codebase Alpha. How are you doing? Um, so let's let's do a quick googling. Let's Google it with Bing or something like that. C time, yes. Um, so yes, we C time S doesn't seem to exist in our project, so we need to be um, C time S MSVC. There's a C time S. Okay, which is in time dot H. Um okay. But C time doesn't have it. Unless it's in oh gosh. Are we looking that old? Is the is the nothing in stud C time? Well, this is a bit a bit unpleasant. Um, because if I go stud C time, that certainly exists. Um, defined in the header C time, um, but we don't have, yeah, we don't have anything else there. Do you know what? I think we're just going to have to disable the deprecation. Um, <clears throat> Ash define CRT secure no warnings. That fail CRT secure no warnings. Yeah, Charwaka, um I've been looking while well, not there. Um, show purposes, reject all, go away. We can get C time. What we're struggling with is C time underscore S. Um, An MSVC is moaning at us for, um, well, that really. If we copy that and drop that in here. <laughs>
Um, that's the definition that we need, really. Um, let's see if that if def fixes it any better. No, it just isn't working. Um, okay, we could disable that with a pragma. I'm rather confused that that define doesn't seem to work for me. Um, do we need to put a one in there? Do we need to define it to one? Still full rebuild. Well, we've put that define in. Let's just dot some I's, cross some T's. Why are we struggling with this? Um, the control alt let's show some output. Okay. Ah, please. Uh, no, give me the output again. So it's asking for which version of Windows are we doing? Are we working with? Okay, I mean, go to that mess, that error. That error is exactly there. Um, no, it's not. It's there. Do we need to blank it out and then put it in? This way? No, because it isn't defined at that point. We're not using the stud AFX, are we? Really? Wow. Um Okay, let's go. Time dot H will kill that lot off and we'll now go um, C time underscore S. Which takes the buffer, a size T and a const time. So let's have a look at C time S. Um, that makes more sense, doesn't it? Unfortunately, it means we're going to have to do the car star thing. So let's just go with it. So we'll do that and then we'll go put the um, camera in and return stra. A little bit annoying, but hey, that seems to work let's um see if the compiler's happy now the compiler's happy we are going to grant access to everything on here and it's serving okay so if we now go back to this here um daytime is on port 13 i suspect then so let's go and change our project settings and it'll have in debugging that command argument being that so let's say we say it's localhost now so let's try and get the time from here and that's come out as Tuesday June the 4th at that particular time which I completely agree is what it is so you know I'm not overly keen on the fact that 
let's just kill that window so that we've got the other one up. That's showing nothing, but again, we know what we've done there. That's the synchronous version of the server. Uh, yeah, I know we've done a bit of nastiness there, but that's a little bit of a, of a shame. Okay, let's go to the interesting thing now. So let me copy and paste this back into chat for us. Um, we're now going to look at the server that I really did, the, the part I wanted to look at, but we needed to build up to, which was an asynchronous TCP daytime server. So once again, we're going to create the IO context. We've done that. Um, we're now instead though we're gonna run well actually let's do this from pretty much from scrap um oh gosh this is big this could actually be the last thing we end up doing today you know so clearing all this out apart from the um include that and let's kill out main and I know that we should have returned something from main as well so this time um, similar thing again we're gonna try we're gonna have a boost ACO IO context we're gonna call it IO context this all makes sense so far then we're gonna create something called a TCP server context okay what is this TCP server and how do I deal with it um, ah that's something that we've got to make okay that's fine let's um, let's just make a dummy one for now so I know because I've been slightly naughty I'm looking ahead a little let's say that it's gonna be a class um, TCP server uh, let's say that that has in the public um, a TCP server um, boost ACO IO on text None of this should be any of surprise, except we're only taking a reference, IO context. And we're going to quickly, um, well, let's put the colon where I like it. IO context. And again, I know a lot of people put an underscore after there or before there. I don't. And let's also have the acceptor. Well, we don't need that yet. Let's let's just make enough so that this stops moaning. And obviously, at this point, we know that um, let's say privately, we need. Oh, yeah. Hang on. Let's let's get this right. And let's say privately, we create one of those to be used. So that stops the compiler moaning too much. Again, um, catch. Let's have a reference to an exception and do the classic of going um, stud c error e dot what stud end line. So at least we've now got a compiler not moaning. Yeah, I know about the argument to a feature test macro, but that doesn't seem to stop us running. So back to our main function. We've created a, a context, we've created a server that uses that context, and now we're going to run that context. And return the zero. So that's the main function. That's all it's doing, is it's spinning it up, kicking it off. So, we've got a TCP server, we've got the IO context, um, it also would like to make an acceptor C 
So if you remember again from earlier, we had the, this notion of a TCP acceptor. So that takes the IO context and a TCP endpoint of TCP V4 and on port 13. And at this point again, I'm prepared to go, you know what, uh, using boost ACO IP TCP there because it makes sense, except a class qualified name is required. Okay, we might have to do that. Um, might be doing that outside then. We might be having... We, oh, hang on. And the PCH, that TCP still seems to exist. And that would make sense because we've got the includes in the PCH file. That's fine. You know, I'm going to let them let them live there. So, we obviously need an acceptor. That's cool beans. Let's um, grab ourselves an acceptor. Boost. Uh, actually, it's just a TCP acceptor, isn't it? So, that's the acceptor. Wow, I do apologise. I'm getting quite quiet when I'm doing this kind of stream, aren't I? I need to remember that I'm not just learning for me, but I'm also um, trying to do other things and stream as well. Okay, so this constructor actually has to have something in it. It does need a body of, let's say, let's call it start accept. Let's do it void, shall we? Start accept. And that actually needs to be private. Or it could be, so let's make it private. Okay, I'm back. That's that's interesting. So yeah, we need a start accept function. That's going to say um, that we want a TCP connection pointer. Now this is something that we haven't yet made either. I wonder how good um, VS support is for generating C++. Uh, TCP connection again. Create um, IO context. So will this now go, um, oh, it, it doesn't seem to like the idea. Okay. Let's have a class there, shall we? Let's say that, yeah, let, let's not, so let's just... I don't like this where it shows you the use before the definition. So I'm going to go up the stack a little and write this TCP connection. So the connection is, uh, publicly inherits from boost enable shared from this. of type TCP connection. Okay, that's now moaning 
but it shouldn't be. Incomplete type is not allowed there. Which means I assume that there's something wrong with it. Um, cool beans. Let's go public. Ooh, there's a type def here. And it's a boost shared. To boost share pointer of TCP connection. Now, is this really the way to do it? Or do we do I don't see why that using wouldn't work. Does anybody other than me see why that wouldn't work? Do you know, I'm going to go with it. And then if I'm proven to be wrong, so be it. I'll be wrong. But that always seems the more C++ -y way to do things. Um, static pointer create. Um, let's take in the I.O. context and I've been working in C Sharp a lot today, haven't I? Return pointer of a new TCP connection. Take it, giving the I.O. context. So all create does is goes from um, oh yeah, we haven't um, we haven't done the constructor yet. So let's make a reasonable assumption that we're going to have a constructor. Um, That's reasonably similar to this on um, for now that should be fine except that it's a TCP connection IO um, context doesn't exist I think I'll find it does now and we're back so th there might be more that we need there, but that's how we get that. So we need to grab a socket reference. So again, there's gonna have to be a socket reference in here so i suspect at some point the constructor is going to have to deal with that um how did we make a socket before we'll have probably done it so let's let's guess at it and suggest that we must have done a socket in here um yeah we've done one and it just takes an io context okay that's cool so let's suggest then that um we do the same socket um, and that can take the IO context as well what's that moaning about it's not a non-static data member or base class of the type of the class TCP connection um, I'm going to disagree and say that we do have a non-static socket Am I disagreeing for a good reason, though? Um, I'm going to assume that the compiler is wrong here. Uh, let's just do a full rebuild. I'm not... Oh, hang on. Ah, it's references. 
we've got that issue. Okay, ah, ha, ha, yeah, okay. I see where that goes. This is why people use the underscore. I'm not going to. And it's saying that the socket can't be initialized with an IO context. Um, Non-const qualified. Does that change anything? Let's leave this where it lies and see what's going to happen here. Because um, there's more to play anyway. Uh, let's have a look. Is there a... Where's the... Um... Ah, the constructor is actually private. And that does make sense. Yeah, let's build this constructor out. Um, we actually don't store off the IO context. That's interesting. Um, we just work with that socket. The socket type is just a TCP socket, not, the, not a reference to. Ah, so we just return that as a reference. Okay. That makes more sense. So, back up to where we were with start. Message is make daytime string. So, I'm guessing that function is going to need to come back. We don't have that function anymore. Um, I'm going to essentially re-steal the old ver version of it. Which is not quite well. I'm I'm just going to do the copy and paste version, um, and it can be a free function for now. Why not? Um, and again, it's well. Do you know what? Let's just leave it as C time um, because we're importing. Uh, yeah, let's go time.h. Let's have it as c time. Uh, might as well just do the whole thing now, don't I? I've nerd sniped myself. Of a size of buffer now. So that's how we make a daytime string. Something like that. So starting this connection is, well, we're making that message up. So I make the assumption that we need a stud string message down there. And then, oh, we've got a big line. We've got a big line here. Boost ACO, async right. So we're, yeah, this is where the async stuff comes in. Do an async right, and what does that want? That wants us. That wants a lot of things. So we'll give it a socket. We will give it a buffer of message. So we've got that, and we're going to do a boost bind. To a reference to TCP. Connection handle right. So 
So this will be a right handler of some description that we haven't got. Shared from this. Which I again assume that we've got to define and I assume that that's why we're getting a monop up here on like 13. It's going to be something around that, isn't it? Um, yeah, a placeholder and uh, placeholders. Bytes transferred. Wow, boost is wordy. Um, where does bind live? Bind lives in. Oh, hang on. Have we got it? Is that a. Is that a standard? Nah. Right, where does boost bind live? That's the first question I want to know. Um, and I am actually going to slightly cheat here and just grab the source listing. Boost bind lives in its own place. Cool beans. We will stick that in there then. Enable shared from this lives in its own as well. So hopefully that'll get rid of some of that. Async right. Uh, handle right doesn't yet exist. That's fine. So we've got fewer and fewer moans here. Um, so anything else that this does, that the client does now, um, handle right is going to have to handle. So let's, well, we might as well make a handle right. Um, so let's make that method. I keep wanting to say function when it isn't. Um, Boost system error, error code and that'll be a const reference and to be fair never get used that's ah, fine so let's not even bother with that that's the error code and it'll also take a size t but again we're not going to use that so that's fine okay so we've got that what's boost aco async right moaning about um writing the socket the buffer and we're throwing a bind at we're throwing the right handler at it so what is this moaning about this is saying that no instance of overload function boost aco async right matches that argument list by the way if people if you can can't see me at any point do let me know um because it becomes well it, it'd be nice for you to be able to hear to see me let's do a full rebuild um no instance of that overloading function matches we've got non Standard syntax somewhere. Um, uh, use Amazon to create a pointer to a member. And yeah, we're getting nothing for the um, for that async right, are we? Got all, all the brackets look to be in the right place. Uh, let me again refer to the actual source listing. Um, yeah, boost ACO async, right. Do we need to include this shared pointer? Is it saying that we need a boost shared pointer somewhere here? Is this where we're moaning? Um, let's have a, another look at this. Let's have another build. Uh, all okay at the moment. Thank you, Codebase Alpha. That's uh, excellent. Uh, you're still saying that async write is not happy. Um, that's slightly annoying. So, 
Do we need to go and specify those um, bytes transferred? I mean, I don't see that we should have to. Uh, argument types are a socket, uh, a buffer, and something bound. What does async write actually like? Uh, search online, see what happens. Boost async write problem. Okay. Is there a bracket after shared from this? Uh, no, and there shouldn't be. As far as I'm aware, that's no, no. Um, the boost bind is taking the hand. Um, yeah, that's what it should be taking because. It's binding all of those into there. Um, one thing it is claiming that there's an issue with is online... Okay, that was claiming an issue. Yeah, non-standard syntax use ampersand to create a pointer to a member. Um, so it's actually the... Uh, it's... Okay, let's just get these a little bit more hmm ah hang on why are we oh uh, yeah socket hang on hang on hang on it should be socket ref shouldn't it i am goof which makes that work right yeah um copying from code that's already written when you've changed a few things is is difficult by the way hi there fp jester how are you doing i uh, hope everything is well for you i hope you've had a good week that i've kind of had off um that goes for everybody in chat hopefully everyone's had some good times um first light i think it is time to switch on so that i can see a little bit better Saying that it is about quarter past nine. It is getting ready to go to, to go dark. And I am definitely getting ready for another drink. Um, just to let you know, I can't see this stream lasting that much longer, to be fair. Uh, I am just going to implement this and then call it for the night. Uh, and try and get back into the full swing on Friday. Because I'm, I'm still feeling sketchy. I'm just very aware that I've left. I, I've missed a few streams. I don't want to miss any more. So, okay, we've got that. Um, we've got the uh, the connection in. So we now need to go back up to our server. Um, because we only created the connection in the start accept function, which is cool. But that's going to do not much. It just means that we've now got the TCP connection to work with. So let's, now that we've made ourselves a TCP connection with a shared pointer, let's say that we use the acceptor um, and we do an async accept now. So new connection, um, go for the socket. Hang on, I can't type again, can I? So we're grabbing a share pointer to a socket there. Um, and we're back to, do you know what? This looks like it's big enough that I'm going to redo this trick. And go, um, boost, bind, uh, TCP server, Handle, accept. Oh, look, we've seen this kind of um, thing before. We're going to use this instead of the shared from this um, because we're not sharing 
this out. We're not sharing pointers to this. New connection and boost ACO placeholders error. And again, just to kind of space these things out as we did above. Okay. I accept a dot and it's moaning at the dot there. And I suspect that's possibly because again the acceptor shouldn't necessarily be a oh hang on, should it be a reference on this one? So I'm guessing that what this is actually trying to do is make me do that. No, I'm wrong. Um, in which case, let's write the handle accept. That's going to be a private function, uh, private method, isn't it? Handle accept, and that is going to take a pointer to a connection and an error code. Cool. Um, TCP connection pointer. So that's our standard. That's our boost shared pointer. Yada yada yada. And it wants a boost. Um, what is it? System error code. And that's a, just a simple const reference. So if we don't get an error, new connection start and then start accept. So it's looping, it's going wait, so it's essentially an async await thing by the looks of it. We're going async accept. And then when it comes to it goes there. Yeah, this is it's callback hell. Okay, I'm hoping that there's a better way of doing this. However, I make the assertion that we should have this working. So if I have another go at if I have a go at running this, it's going to tell me to go away. And what have I done there? New connection start. Maybe if we actually invoke that for that method, then it'll build. So let's reuse the same client that we used before, and that's gonna build, run, and come back. So we've got that running. Essentially, what we've learned here is that we're dealing with a bit of callback hell. So everything seems to be callback related. You know, the connection. We build one, we build as a shared pointer. Now that means I need to look at what shared pointers do. What is a shared pointer? Because I'm not going to bother with... Um... What's it? I, I'm not going to bother playing about with um, the UDP version. I suspect that there isn't going to be a huge amount of difference. And we've essentially got what we needed. Um... Which is that we've got an async write. I also assume that there's an async read. Well, instead of the accept. So we can asynchronously read off a socket um, in the client. In fact, let's just poke about with a bit of code and have a look. See if um, that socket's there. So, I don't know. In fact, we could make try and make this async now, couldn't we? Async read some. Yeah, so async read some, I suspect, just takes um, takes buffer sequence and read handler. Um, as opposed to whatever the normal read some takes. So yeah, it takes, it takes a buffer and then a handler. And then the handler... D does what we've just done there. Let's let's have a go at this actually, just for the laugh. 
let's say that we're going to async read some of that. Let's not prat well, let's do the handler which is going to be um, display value. Let's just create a simple um, void display value. The buffer is probably, well, that probably needs to be. What's it saying? Um, what are we moaning about here? Yeah, that's now actually void. Um, and we probably get the. Um, do we have to get anything through on that display value? Let's have a look. Let's see what boost async read sum does. Boost basic stream socket uh, async read sum. Okay, so the handler will get the error and the number of bytes transferred, and you throw it into the buffer, and the buffer's needed. So we literally want to do all of this in a class, but for now we're going to use a very, very naughty global. Because we can. Uh, the display value, I'm not going to bother taking the error code and the bytes transferred. What I'm going to do instead is just literally do... All of the... Oh, hang on. Buffers can take a size as well. Which is a size T, so it goes size T len. I guess that actually probably goes global. Obviously, we can encapsulate this. I just want to see if the async works as I think it does. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm not bothering with the error handling either. Let's get rid of that too. Let's just say that we're going to do the C outright on that lot. Um, and suggest that that should be it. Um, knowingly, what this does mean is that this forever loop could be interesting. We probably don't need it to loop forever. Um, as I don't think the server's got a forever loop in it, has it? No. Because we run the IO context and then kill it at some point. So there's the server back up and running. The IO context is running. Um, if I fire up the client, which I believe to be async, um, oh, and it tells me to go away, read handler, it's not met. T, too many arguments for call. With T as ACO true handler type. Okay, line 980, we can't become. Oh, my handler does not meet the documented type requirements for a read handler. So, okay, let's, let's steal that. And let's say that our handler is actually going to look more like that anyway. So it's got the right number of arguments and whatnot. Give it a run. It runs. It's running. Running. It's not calling, is it? Whoa! I smell a memory leak and a half there. That was hammering ram. Um, I don't think we need that forever loop anymore. But I now think we need the IO context dot run. Yeah, thought we would. Okay, let's try it. Let's see if that ever comes back with anything. It doesn't seem to have done. Um, let's see what happens here. So, breakpoint there. Oh, we're in release mode, aren't we? Okay, that's fine.
yeah, it's just coming straight out. I don't think it's ever actually going into um, into here at all. I very much doubt that's ever even been called. So why not just for now go? You know what? Let's do that. So we're going to spin in the loop. Ah, there we go. And it comes out. But it's writing nothing. Okay, let's respin. Let's look at what this actually is giving us. Let's respin it properly. So what is buff? Uh, buffer has data. That's complete null, isn't it? So yeah, the writing of null is interesting. Let's spin this again and see if we actually get an error code. The error is zero. Well, zero seems reasonable to me. Bytes transferred not. Ah, so it it's doing the read, but it's not giving us anything out of it. Um, our server is running, although doing very very little. Let's see what happens if we bomb out and the server stops running. Actually, so it shouldn't even get to connect. Yeah, no, no connection made. So we are connecting. It's just we don't know what the async read sum is doing necessarily. Um, so what's the buffer documentation? So I wonder if I'm making a buffer badly. Um, Ah, uh, we could do this, couldn't we? We could probably do that and then go bytes transferred. That might make more sense. Uh, let's respin, let's run that server again, and then we'll try this client. So the server, I believe, to be back up and running, and that black screen says it is. So we're hitting there. Bytes transferred is 19. Well, that was the issue then. So that length that we had, we don't care about. Um, in fact, that could disappear and I suspect not be an issue. I also wonder if it'd work for, it works for a vector of car. That's cool. So we could use a stud vector here. Um, it's nice to know. So we've now got a way of asynchronously reading information back. That's handy. I, do you know what? I think what we'll do is we'll call it there for tonight. Because as much as it's been reasonably short, and I've lost all my tags again. Um, we're going to go and have a look somewhere else for where we can go to. Um, but I think we've now got enough information from here. That we could go back and look at rebuilding our socket top without having to copy and paste everyone else's code we can do it in um in our bot in hubble bot reasonably simply so does anybody have anyone that you would like to raid host whatever um i think we're going to go across and say hello to a very honest Welshman. Um, let's go and raid Honest Dan Games. Let's go and say hello to him. Um, make sure that everyone's happy. Uh, yeah, Lana Lux is on. Um, do you know Lana Lux, Minxy Rose? Um, I didn't know you if you knew her. 
Or, or we could read Ninja... Actually, let's let's do that. Let's have a look at what Ninja Bunny 9000 is doing. Because that name is great. Oh no, Ninja Bunny's gone offline. Why you go offline? Why you go offline? Um, Honest Dan is on. Um, actually, shall we go and raid someone who I think is going to be doing C++? Let's go and say hello to Rhyme. Um Yeah, let's do that for a change. Yeah, I know Lon is a member of our team. Um... Uh, and is a wonderful streamer. I just didn't know if you knew, if you knew her. Anyway, I'm going to uh, let's have a look at. Uh, do you know what? Let's have a look at what it. Let's have a look at the team. Um, that one, Worming Rose. I haven't got the bot set up. So Twitch.tv. Let's go and have a look at the team. Let's look at who's on. Lana Lux. Um, Code Phobia's on. Bobby Tables is on. Um, what's Bobby doing? What's Michael Jolly doing? What's Codephobia doing? Codephobia is getting servers. Oh, Codephobia is actually playing with servers. Oh, that could be interesting. Let's go and play. Let's go and let's go and read Codephobia. Let's go and have a look at some. Um, let's go and have a look at someone getting servers up. This could be fun. So I will see everybody on Thursday night. Um, thank you very much for being here. Sorry it's been a short one, but hopefully I'll be back up to strength soon. And in the meantime, let's all be great people to Codephobia. Good night, everybody. Oh yeah, I oh, know I have to wait 10 seconds. Hey! So I'll, I'll say it again reasonably quickly. Good night, everybody.